My guest today is Mr. Haytham al Riyahi, CEO and co founder of Circa Biotech, the leading and only insect farming business in the UAE. Today, we're going to discuss uh, the future of insect farming, the applications of insect farming, and everything in between. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, food waste is a huge problem. It's not only for the UAE, it's in the world. Actually, one third of what we produce for human consumption is just wasted. Yes. So we talk about food waste and food loss. So throughout the supply chain, from the farm to the table of the consumer, one third of what we are producing is just wasted. And to be honest, I think that's a worldwide average. I think in some developed we are wasting Absolutely. up to 50% probably. Absolutely. Yes. So, for example, in the UAE, mm. we are the fourth country worldwide per capita mm. in terms of food waste. We are throwing 2 million tons a year of edible food. Mm. And this is quite, quite a number. And in my opinion, it's a little bit underestimated in my own opinion. And not only is it a, a loss of the product, it's actually being disposed into a lot of the times into uh, dumps, right? Where it causes other environmental this issues. Is, this is the, the, the problem on the top of the problem. Mm. Actually, there is, there is this problem of food waste, but also there's another problem of the inefficiency of solid waste management and organic waste management in general, not mm. only food. Our system is very inefficient. So, for example, for food waste, what we do, if we can divert it into food banks or charities or things like that, okay, we do that, but everything else go to landfills. Mm -hmm. So organic waste in landfills, this is a huge problem because while decomposing, it generates methane. Mm -hmm. So methane, this is a gas that is greenhouse effect gas and is 25 to 35 times more potent mm. than CO2. Mm. So to give you an idea, the amount of methane that we are producing in landfills coming from food waste is the equivalent of the total fleet of the UAE. So all the emission of the cars, mm. trucks, and planes. Wow. And planes. This is equivalent to what we are producing in our landfills when it comes to methane. That's why, for example, there is a very um, aggressive and ambitious plan uh, here in the UAE to reduce our methane emission because we are conscious about mm. how harmful this could be. It's very interesting that you didn't start with insects. You started with the problem. Yeah, actually, because this and, is and how, uh, how yes, it happened. Yes. This is how it happened. Actually, we wanted to solve a problem. Yes. And the more we thought about the problem, we discovered that also there is another problem. And the other problem is, um, in 2050, we will be 10 billion people on Earth. Mm. So we need to find ways to feed those people but also to feed the animals mm. that feed those people. Mm -hmm. And if we do it the way that our agriculture system is going right now, the linear way, we need 1.7 Earths. So linear is find the grow, use the resources available, and then produce the food and then throw it away. Exactly. Nothing going back into the system. Exactly. So okay. this is this is our system, this is how we do, this is how we produce food right now. Yes. Okay. So if we continue this way by 2050, which is like 30 years, yeah. or 28 now yeah. years, uh, which could happen like this. We yes. remember ourselves 28 years ago. Well, now you look at your children. Exactly. You're not thinking about yourself. Exactly. About, yes. Exactly. And we won't be able to feed the people if we continue this mm -hmm. way. So we have to think about other ways of producing our food and how we can feed the animals that we are eating also. So by, by 2050, we need to increase by 53% our production in protein for animal feed. Mm. And there is no way that we can do it this way because there is no enough 
um, um, fertile land or arable land to do that much of, of production in protein. For animal feed, to create animal, animal protein. Exactly. So if we are doing aquaculture, for example. Fish farming. Fish farming. Yes. Uh, aquaculture, yeah, this yes. is fish farming. Yeah. So how we feed them? Uh, we feed them with, with fish, that is. With fish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is one of the sustainability issues with well, fish farming. Exactly. So we are um, industrially fishing. To feed the fish To farm. fish the fish farm. Yeah, yeah. 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 And and you see you see the extent of of the problem, and it's not only UAE problem. Of course, we are having this problem more than others because we are like fourth per capita. But it's it's a global problem mm -hmm. that we are trying to solve. So when we put all these um, problems together, we came to to a solution that what actually is more than this. We thought if we if you walk in a forest. Mm. A white forest that, that is, is not um, used by humans. White forest. Actually, there is no waste in a forest. Yes. A white forest, there is no waste in a forest. Even though there's animals living there, so there's a corpse, dead, dead animals, there's falling leaves, so there's everything, but there's no... It's not accumulating as waste. Exactly. How, how nature is doing that. Mm -hmm. So it's simple. Nature works in cycles. Mm. So when a rat is dead, for example, there will be insects that will be eating the corpse. Mm -hmm. And then there will be bacteria that decomposing every that. And those insects by themselves, they will become food for reptile, for birds. And this is going around. So every element is important in those cycles. Mm -hmm. And this is the circularity. Yes. that nature is using. And one of the pillars, let's say, of the generative system of nature are insects and bacteria. And fungus. Bacteria, yeah, yeah. Uh, microorganism. Microorganisms. So yes. microorganism, this is like a fungus, bacteria, yeast. Yeah. All of that is like microorganisms. I'm, I'm a microbiologist. So, <laughs> so, <this> is, yeah. <laughs> so these are the two pillars. So we're saying, if it works for, for nature, why doesn't it work for us? Mm -hmm. So the so idea was... Get inspiration. Exactly. This nature. is what we call biomimicking. Mm. This is how you, you observe the nature, you observe the efficiency of the nature, and you try to do the same thing with, with an idea of what is coming before and after and how all of that could be integrated. So we, we, we made a system, engineered an environment that harnessed the power of insects and bacteria. Mm. So we created a company that uh, collect food waste. So we collect food waste from um, food retailers and Cir farms. Circa Biotech. Circa. What circa does Circa mean? Circa actually, it's it's a Latin name for circular. Okay. Circa. So it's called okay. circus. Yes. Okay. It's, it's it's a circle. Circle. And biotech because we are using biotechnology. Yes. So a circular biotechnology, Circa Biotech. So we used that system uh, to 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 mimic the environment of those animals. So how we can harness the power of insect to do the, the, the up, not the recycling actually, the upcycling, upcycling. of food waste. Uh, we, we put those organisms in an environment where they can first thrive and grow mm -hmm. and second, reproduce. Mm -hmm. So we engineered a system where we are having a, a control of temperature and humidity, um, light and light cycles. And also we, we developed a system that allow us to pre-treat uh, the waste that we are having using microorganisms. All kinds of waste? Everything. All kinds Organic of waste. waste. Organic, organic waste. waste. But you know, with comp let's say if we are mimicking nature, we are looking at nature, you end up having compost, 
with the microorganisms. You end up having uh, mushrooms as a product and you end up having insects. So we see those things, those industries growing now, composting, mushroom farming and, and insects. But with, with composting and mushroom farming, you have to be selective. Not as. Not you. Not as. Why? And this is, this is actually a very good question. Actually, what, what is happening is we collect the food waste, mm. okay? We start by doing fermentation. This could be, sorry, I, I want to I stress this every, because it's very important. Every, Cheese. every, so this could be fruit and vegetables. Yes. Uh, this could be cooked foods, cooked food, cheese, meat, every, processed food. Wow. Uh, processed food, uh, meat, meat and bones, cadavers. Okay. No, no one's going to take it this way. Yes, we don't have any limitation of water content or um, uh, protein content or all of that. So, so we, this is excellent. You have all the inputs, a solution exactly. for all kinds of food. Waste. Why? Because we have two. Because we have fermentation microorganisms and, and then we have insects. Okay, so now you get into the insect farm. What kind of insects? Hmm. So we don't work with all insects. Mm -hmm. We selected one insect, one kind of insect. It's called the black soldier fly. Okay. Why the black soldier fly? For, for several reasons. First, um, performance reason. Mm. So the black soldier fly have a full cycle of 45 days. So this is very efficient. Okay. But within the full cycles, let me, let me get back a few, sure, few words. Sure, this is, this is <laughs> the passionate <laughs> yeah. part, yes. So, um, actually, you remember this story of the caterpillar eating and becoming a butterfly Correct. and then... Yes. Okay? Actually, all the insects, they have the same. Okay. So, all the flies that you see, they started their life as a larvae. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, a grub. So, our insect, the black soldier fly, as all insects start uh, with eggs. Mm. In four days, they hatch and we have larvae. We call them neonates. We call them neonates because they are few millimeters. Tiny. Tiny. Mm. It's few millimeters in white and, and they're, they're uh, in long, sorry, they're, they're white as microns. Mm. They're barely, barely seeable with, with the naked eye. Those animals will stay 14 days eating and they grow 500 times. Wow. I know 500 times sometimes like a little bit, like it's an idea, we, we, we don't see it. Let me bring it to, to something like you can see. So it's like for a human baby in 15 days grow as much as seven elephants. <laughs> That much. That's how fast. That much. So every day they eat the double of their body weight. So it's like for me, I'm 80 kg. It's like for me eating 160 kg per day. Every single day. I, no, because tomorrow I will be fatter. So I will be maybe 120 and I wow. will be eating 200. 200. Exactly. Exactly. And this is the, how they grow. So for us, this is very important. Because this is what we will be needing. Actually, why we are doing this? I said we will be upcycling food waste. The idea behind it is not only we will be consuming all the food waste, mm. but we will be transforming this food waste with the most efficient, uh, actually the most efficient engine or the Conversion. most efficient machine that, that I ever know, mm -hmm. the, the cells. Mm -hmm. Because the cells, what they will be doing, they will be converting all the food into protein and fat. Okay. Okay? So what we'll be doing is we'll be having those grubs, eating all the food waste, growing until 10 days. Okay? Then we harvest them mm -hmm. and we extract the protein and the fat from the grubs. Mm. And this is what will be our alternative protein. Yes. This is what we'll be giving to animals. To this, is, this is an important distinction because some people hear insect farming. They think, okay, are we going to be eating uh, cricket? That's not what you are doing. You are no. creating protein for the animal industry, mainly poultry and fish, correct? 
it's it's really important to 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 highlight the fact that we give those insects or the protein coming from those insects only to the animals that naturally eat grubs, mm -hmm. eat larvae. So if you have chicken in your backyard, you'll be seeing that they have this reflex, the picking reflex. Mm. So they'll be looking every day, yes. all the day long for, for grubs. Yes. This, is, this is what they eat actually naturally. Fish are the same. Uh, I remember when I was a kid and we were going fishing, what we put in the hook. A worm. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And fish love it. Mm. Just love it. Because mm. like it has everything. It was made by the nature to convert the waste into protein and fat. Okay. And this is high quality protein. It's not like rubbish protein. Yes. It's not like waste protein. This is the best that you could be. So we have several studies. When I'm saying several, I should say thousands of study w working on the nutritional uh, content of insect, and especially those insects that we are now into it. Mm. So uh, insect farming is mainly working on two species, the black soldier fly and the mealworm. So these are two that they're having like very high mm. level of protein and the protein that they are having the acidoamine um, profile is really interesting, really, really interesting. Not only this, not only this, the protein and the fat are for high quality, but naturally those insects, they produce what we call peptide. So peptides, these are a small protein, and these are small protein that are active against other pathogen microbes. Mm. So by eating that, you will enforce the animal, the, the, the fish or, or the poultry internal immune system, and it will fight against pathogens. I think this is an important concept in agriculture because today we see, um, as you said, rubbish proteins or different kinds of protein. Let's say you're feeding mainly a corn diet to poultry you're gonna end up seeing more disease, more pathogens, more problems, more antibiotic use, and so on. And, and uh, animal industry is one of the biggest sources of antibiotic resistance. Um, even though they try to blame the doctors, <laughs> the reality is the animal industry is using the same type of antibiotics that humans are using. And, and hormones. And hormones. So uh, this is a higher quality feed. Not only is it replacing, um, unsustainable practices of feed that's also giving a higher quality food product. Exactly. Do you have any other waste or product streams that are coming out of this process? Yeah, I, I will come to that. Mm. But first, um, here I wanted to say also that um, the, the, this protein or, or what we are producing, it should be also part of the diet. Mm. So for chicken, for example, we don't give only insects that will be too much it's like for mm. us eating only me meat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that because they need fibers they need other things so it's it's a balanced diet it's part of the feed exactly 10 20 17 to 21 depending on on the species okay this for us for example layers we are feeding 17 percent protein correct. content as part of the feed mix of the feed mix. so this will replace most of the protein and exactly. some of the other. Exactly. So what we will be doing... Uh, for As a standalone, what's the protein percentage on, on there? Oh, it's 56. It's 56%, 56 protein. Yeah, 56 to 65, depending on what we are giving them. So that's, if, if that's I read incredible. them, for example, yeah. on, on more protein diet, they will have like 60, 70%. Yeah. Yes. So... Uh, Coming back to what you said. Yes. So we are, we are having... Um, protein and oil, but we have also another byproduct, uh, which is uh, their frass. The way the okay, the manure. The manure. They yes. they produce manure because yes. they are eating, so yes. they produce manure. Yes. And this manure is very efficient for fertilizer. Some of the highest quality. So for us, vermi compost, which is something else, but it's also an insect manure, is called black gold. It is. 
that's yes. how that's how hi yes. high quality it is. N knowing that the the vermi compost is is made by worms, not larvae, yes. so it's another animal. It's a different. So they don't eat everything. Yes, ours. They are like voracious eaters. They eat everything. So we can transform everything. So this is solving even another issue because we have fertilizer inputs coming from chemicals. So this By is accident. A, uh, another <laughs> like a, source of yeah. natural fertilizer. You know, uh, uh, as a scientist, this is the exciting part. But a lot of our listeners are from the business world. Sure. And from the business world in, in the UAE, in Dubai, in, in the UAE. Can we talk a bit more about this industry, the future growth, the investability is this, uh, and what are your plans? Actually, Circa Biotech is not the only company working on insect farming in the world. So there's over 60 companies working mm -hmm. on insect farming for feed. There's other companies mm -hmm. working on insects for uh, animal, uh, sorry, for human food, like like mm -hmm. uh, crickets, crickets, for example. Uh, others are using other insects, but the one that they are working on um, animal feed are over over 60. Focused on black soldier soldier fly as well? Mostly. Black soldier fly and mealworm. So okay. there's these these two uh, these two insects that are, are used throughout the world. Yeah. So in Circa Biotech uh, we have two specificity. That is what stands us out of, of the crowd in, in this world of insect farming. The first is our um, fermentation process. Mm. So our fermentation process, it's coming from the, the idea that we discussed before of how nature acts. And your biotechnology background. background yes. uh, that actually, our fermentation has allowed us to reduce the harvesting time from 14 days to nine days. Mm. So this is what we bring to... to as an IP of the company. As something that is ours. Mm. This is what we develop by ourselves. And this is this is what you know. I was saying that the, the coming into this farm, you see that it's a it's a lab. It it's is a high tech lab, and it you is. guys are working on reducing this. It is. Uh, so it, it's period. it's one one aspect. Actually, I would say it is a lab, a factory, and the farm. And the farm. So the first thing that distinguish us among the other is like. We, we we harness also the power of microorganisms. Reducing the production time. Reducing the production time. This is really important because at the end of the day, what we are selling is protein. Mm -hmm. So it's important. It's you, you are producing chicken. Yes. So you know if your chicken is ready for market in two weeks instead of three weeks. That's a, this is that's a huge difference. This is a huge difference. So for us, it's the same. So instead of fourteen days, we reduce it to nine days. Yes. So this is the first aspect. And the second aspect is our process, the whole thing, the whole process, the way that we, uh, the environment is maintained, mm. the way that we make it uh, suitable for, for those animals to grow and to reproduce. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are three co-founders. Mm -hmm. So it's me and Christina, we talked about like yes. how we had the idea and, and very quickly, because we, we realize that we need an industrial mm. part of it. So we had our third co-founder, Ludmila, who is, had a PhD in manufacturing. So this lady, her job is to build factories. Mm. So, and we bring all those knowledge. If you look at this industry worldwide, the, the interest is getting enormously the five last year. So I will give you one, one figure. Uh, five years ago, so um, it was the investment into insect farming was below five million dollars worldwide. Mm, total. Worldwide, mm -hmm. five million dollars. Last year, the investment into insect farming reached 425, 425 million. million dollars. Mm -hmm. And growing amazing so a lot of investor interest of course because you can you can see how it is and more than this this is considered maybe deep tech because you're gonna end up changing industries we are and in aspects that today honestly I cannot even tell you at what extent hmm. 
because the application of those proteins and those oils, we, we are just scratching the surface. So when you extract the product, the protein, you get also high quality oils, which could Correct. have applications that... W would you say you are capturing carbon in your process? Is it a carbon intensive, you know, a part of the sustainability? We, we are not capturing, mm -hmm. but we are not producing at all. You are, you are reducing the methane? So we are re offsetting. Offsetting methane. Exactly. And then offsetting the fertilizer or the inputs or the feed. Exactly. The solution that we are, we are, we are producing here is economically viable. Mm -hmm. It's not related on subsidiary. It's not related on uh, ha financial help or, or any of that. So this business can be a standalone business mm -hmm. where we are um, getting the food waste processing it so we process the food waste so we are clearly a uh, competitor to landfills yes our idea is to divert food waste from landfill one of our kpis like achievement kpis is if in this country with all the effort of everybody together uh, food banks food retailers it uh, and and deep um uh, AI data, big data, yeah, big, well, data sure. big, big data treatment, because it's it's a very complex. Actually, it's a very very complex problem. If all of us we could divert all the food from landfill, for us we we, we succeed. Yes. We we really succeed on that. So, the first is the treatment of of the of the food waste, uh, and for us it's it's a source of revenue. So this is our first stream. Of revenue, the second. So to treat the food waste, just to clarify, it's uh, you, you get paid to do this. Yes, correct. You're not purchasing the input. No, and, and this is one of the difference, for example, mm. with the rest of the world. Especially now, there's tipping fees that, that was recently introduced this year. This is this is where we are placing ourselves. Like you, you are very aware about it. So we we place ourselves less than the tipping fees for the land. So it's cheaper to give it to you, more exactly. sustainable. More sustainable. Okay. What do you need? <laughs> yes. So this is our first activity and our first activity is processing food waste. Mm -hmm. This is our first stream of revenue. The second stream of revenue is selling protein. So to whom we sell protein? Mm -hmm. The protein, we sell it um, first or to animal feed manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So we are ingredient supplier for the animal feed manufacturer. So he can create that 17% protein mix for me exactly. with a higher quality. You know, a lot of people hear insects, maybe food waste, multiple sources. How do you ensure chemicals, pathogens, all of these things is not being transferred on? Is there a big uh, sterilization, uh, pasteurization? Is there... Is there any risk of, of that contamination or anything? Because it's going to go into our food stream. Exactly. So this is, this is where we are very strict on our manufacturing process mm. and the way that we are getting. So, of course, uh, first there's, there's regulation. Mm -hmm. So because we are into uh, the animal feed, so we are in a re highly regulated environment. Even, even the, the setup of our laboratory and our factory is very strict, mm -hmm. very strict. So the licenses that we get, uh, we get because we were compliant with all of that. Which you are the first, I assume, for this license. Actually, the, the insect farming license, we created it, mm -hmm. didn't exist before. We created the license. So this is where we see like the pioneering part of yes. it. We created it. But in order to create it, we have to be compliant with a bunch. It took us like two years, mm. just this part. Which brings me to the question is that, you know, with these policies and regulations being new and this industry being a new and growing one, uh, what changes do you need to happen for this industry to, to, to reach its potential? Uh, as I said, as pioneers, our first problem is there was no uh, legal framework mm -hmm. uh, so we have to build everything from scratch 
And also from our perspective, we wanted this to happen as soon as possible. Yes. So we wanted to have like adapt some of, of the existing solu solution that, that exists. And one of them, like for now, we are, uh, we are an industry. Mm. We are an industrial operator for animal feed. But in reality, we are also a farm mm. because we are dealing with agricultural waste and we are dealing with um, animal feed. And, and we, are, we are rearing animals. Actually, uh, if you want the law in the, in, the, in the US, those are considered as cattle. The insect farm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the same. Yeah. The same. Because like... If, think about it. If if the chicken that eat your food, you will eat it. Some of it will be transferred there. Mm. So we have to be like as strict, uh, even stricter, than than the guys who are uh, raising and breeding chicken. Mm. And the regulation should be like. For, for the moment, you are in a kind of a gray zone where it's not very very well defined. So we don't benefit from a lot of advantages that farms benefit from. So, which uh, could be a utilities uh, mm -hmm. price, mm -hmm. uh, which could be um, uh, even even like um, if if we buy uh, because we we need sometimes to um, to have like a chicken feed mm. to buy chicken feed. Uh, we buy it the the catalog price, the yes, high price. Yes. We are not subsidized for for anything. Uh, even though we are part of the uh, of the of the strategy of uh, food security in the UAE, uh, maybe something that you you know <laughs> you personally, but our company uh, was inaugurated by Her Excellency Mariam Al Mihiri, the Ministry of the Ministry, the Ministry of, of, climate of Climate Change and Environment, and environment yeah. in the UAE, and she came to our. Um, um, factory and like a former inauguration, we signed an MOU with with the ministry. So we are aligned with with all of that. We are aligned because we will be producing animal feed locally at an industrial scale. We will be solving the problem or contributing to solve the problem of food waste. We will be reducing the, the methane emission. We will be diverting food waste from, from uh, landfill. So it, it takes so and many creating boxes. creating fertilizers for and the creating jobs organic and, fertilizers and, jobs. And, and, and yeah. making money, yeah. which is important, which is very important. because. So, so to summarize, you're saying that what you need is that you should be taken as part of the agriculture industry in all its aspects, in its support measures especially. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All the circularity is nice, all what we are contributing is nice, but in order for us to survive, in order for us to build a sustainable business, the bottom line. Mm. So with everything that you said, and including the, the, the local subsidiary of the animal feed, so we are not into this program. If anyone is hearing here, <laughs> please, uh, we need to be in this program. It's really important for us because we are competing against imported uh, chicken feed or fish feed that is subsidized for, for farmers. Our product is not. Even with that, we could be so, you, so what you're saying is uh, a helpful thing is to include your product into the national subsidy program for farmers locally. Absolutely. So I buy your product through the government subsidy, just like any other feed. Any other feed. Just like any other feed. Any other okay. feed. This is, this is what we are trying to do. And we can be positioned on, on a level that we are in the same or, or same category, let's say, with imported feed. Subsidized. With your own efficiencies and your own business, yeah. you can get there. Yeah. Yeah. I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Dr. Haytham, and we look forward to hearing more about Circa Biotech in the future. Yeah, you are more than welcome. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, and I'm looking forward.